But um, I'm going to go over some scriptures here. Now, in this part of the of this study, I'm going to show you, and I've talked about this in other videos, but I, you know, just if people don't understand, you know, what what is this thing about uh, tithing? Is tithing scriptural? No, it's not. Um, I'll tell you that right up front. You do not, you are not forced to tithe to this ministry or to any other. Uh, but I'm going to show you what the Bible says about supporting men in ministry, and where I get my justification to be full time now in this ministry. Why the Lord has me full time in this thing. Philippians chapter four, verse ten through nineteen says here, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. A true full-time ministry will have that flexibility. They'll learn how to be content in whatever state they're in. They aren't going to be out there saying, just pounding your head, you've got to send us money, you've got to send us money, you've got to send us money, like a lot of the ministries do. Continue, verse 12. I know both how to be abased, put down, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Uh, we have done that. I have done that for years and years. My wife, now that she's come into my life, uh, we've, we've done that. We are willing to be abased. We are willing to live in, in rough conditions and go through rough times and things. Why? To keep the videos coming out free videos okay there's no subscription fee that special club that you have to join so that you can watch our videos you can watch the videos you can duplicate them you can put them out there give them out for free whatever but that comes at a cost to us okay uh, we have to put a lot of time and effort into this thing and that's why when you support this ministry when you say okay i'm going to give you a, a donation that helps to keep us going okay and I'm not, you know, I'll say this, you know, I don't want to get it too far out of myself here, but I'm not, if, if you've donated to this ministry, uh, don't feel like, oh, he's, he's pressuring me for more. No, no, no. If you've donated to the ministry, thank you. Uh, I'm not pushing you for more money, okay? And then you say, well, I can't afford. Then don't give. It's just as simple as that. But I want to show you why you do this here. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Good verse. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. You sacrifice, you say you're making a living. You're, you know, I mean, if I came to you and I said, oh, you have a regular nine to five job, we'll say, or whatever your hours are. Well, you also have to be full-time in ministry along with that job. You'd say, well, I can't. I got, I got bills to pay. I got this. I got that. I can't be full-time. I'm not called into that. Okay, then support a ministry that can be full-time. That's the idea here. Verse 17, I desire fruit that may abound to your account. When you give money to this ministry or other Bible-believing ministries, that money, uh, it, that it produces fruit and it abounds to your account. You're investing in a good ministry. You look and you say, okay, what ministry out there am I going to get my most you know, rewards for, for the most, uh, or for the, for the least amount of money, we'll say. Okay. Um, I put money into this ministry and I'm going to get much more fruit back. I'll talk about that as we continue here. But you see, Paul is saying there that only the Philippians were giving him money at some, at one point in time and they're sending to his necessity. Okay. Again, you're not dealing with a ministry here at least there are other ones out there that are that are mutinaries. They're not missionaries, and they're not taking. They're not just saying we need money for our necessities. There's a lot of other stuff that's entering in there. I mean, you have ministries in this country that are multi-million-dollar ministries. That's not the case here. Okay, when you give money to King James Video Ministries, we're not uh, we're not going out and wasting the money on frivolous things, heated toilets and and like Joyce Myers has. That's actually true. I'm not making that up. Um, and art and, and whatever else, you know, we don't do that. But um, 
it's a sacrifice that you give. You read about that in verse 18. Um, and what happens as a result is, verse 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When you are giving to a good, faithful ministry, God will reward you for it. He'll provide your needs. Don't think to yourself, uh, you know, I, if I give some of my money to, you know, King James Video Ministries, I'm going to, you know, starve or something. No, God will bless you for it. God will bless you greatly for it. Um, keep that in mind. First Timothy chapter 5. Again, I'm showing you the scriptures here because people are going to say, oh, you know, there's no scripture for this. Yes, there is. There's plenty of scripture for it. First, Corinth, or First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 and 18 says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Okay? Do I labor in the word and doctrine? Yes. I've had many, many people comment on my videos and say, I've never seen people go through so many scriptures. That takes time. I mean, just even simple little studies, they take a lot of time. They take me days sometimes. And uh, my wife, you know, it's not that she's got her own little thing and she just cooks and cleans and, and goes out to town and gossips with the women at the local grocery store or something. She doesn't do that. She's joined with me in the ministry. She has some really great, valuable insights of her own that she adds to this ministry. Uh, she's been a real great help me, to me um, for the ministry. And so the two of us, you know, we're, we're bringing out, you know, scriptural studies and things like that. And you're not going to see them very many other places, if at all, uh, many times. But it says there, the elders that rule well are to be counted worthy of double honor. What does that mean? Does that mean you just you speak so highly of them that it's double the honor that you give to normal people? No, it's not talking about that. Double honor means you honor them, say, wow, you know, I thank the Lord for Brother Brian and Sister Catherine. You know, she's not an elder in the sense of overseeing the flock, but she is, you know, an elder in the sense of she's an older woman that can advise younger women. Um, but, you know, the, uh, what you do there is, what's going on is, you, okay, you respect us for the work that we've done, but the other part of that is the um, honor, double honor there is you provide for them financially. You say, oh, come on, how do you know that? Keep reading. Verse 18, for the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. That doesn't mean you send me a bag of corn, okay? You know, I know some people think I have the mentality of an ox, but, uh, <laughs> hey, the Scripture compares me to an ox, so I just, I'm just reading Scripture here, folks. Turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 3. I'm going to read a bunch of verses here. It says, Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas, have not we power to forbear working? To not have a regular nine to five job. Verse 7. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? Here we go. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Okay, doth God take care for oxen? We'll continue it here in just a minute. But you don't go to war of your own charges. In other words, you don't say, you get called, you get drafted to go into the military, and they say, we're going to send you off to war, to bat some battlefield. How much you got on you? So what are you talking about? What do you got in your wallet? Because you got to buy your own uniform, you got to buy your own gun, your own food, and everything else. You have to pay your way to go over to the war. You don't do that. Other people pay for that. Okay? You say that guy's going to protect us. He's going to go fight these these battles that we can't fight. Let's pay for that soldier. That's what a preacher is. Who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Or, or excuse me, I'll start up there. Planteth the vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof. I am planning things and stuff and, and putting videos out there. Why? So that they'll bear fruit. Now, if you have a part in that, if you've donated to this ministry, if you keep us going, you help us to buy the supplies and things like that. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to show what the title is on on camera here, uh, but right here. Uh, I don't want to spoil the study that's going to be coming out before long, but this is a book. 
uh, that's going to be used in one of my wife's uh, a future study of hers. I'm not showing the book, but you know, just show this this white part here. These things are expensive. Okay, these things go. Uh, we spend a lot of money on books, on research materials, on all this stuff back in here and everything. You know, it, it takes a lot of money to run this kind of a ministry. And you know, when you give money to this, this is God's people to buy this stuff. This isn't me having to go out and make wood turnings or something like that to, to finance this. You're putting money into this ministry. It's going to buy these research materials so that we can bring out truth to people. Why? So that it bears fruit. You're helping us to plant the vineyard, you see. Uh, and it says there, or feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock. So if I'm feeding you and you're learning from this ministry and it's God's blessing you and doing things for you, uh, and then you say, well, you know, praise the Lord that, you know, Brother Brian helped me to get saved and, and now it's, I got a good job. The Lord's blessed me with a good job and this and that and stuff. Well, the Lord's blessed you because of you being blessed by th this ministry. Help the ministry continue. See, that's what's being said here. Again, this is not, this is not some, you know, oh, you, you just want to get rich or something. No, no, no. That's not it at all. Um, but let's continue here. Um, let's see where we're at here. Verse 10. Or saith it, it altogether for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? I've sown unto you a lot of spiritual things. If you're on this ministry, if you're on this channel, you've learned a lot of spiritual things here. So is it a great thing if I reap some of the carnal things from some of the brethren out there? No, it's not a bad thing. Keeps us going. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? You pay taxes, you pay the electric bill, you pay other things like that, but you won't pay a preacher that sought you spiritual things? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Now, many people will latch onto that and they'll say, See, Paul would not take money. He refused to take money. We just read about over in Philippians that he was taking money from them. Why did Paul not take money from the Corinthians? Because they were carnal. They would have used it against him. Why do you think he's explaining it to them? Why don't I take money from Google? Because I don't want money from Google. I could monetize my account. I'd get more views that way. They'd promote my channel. But see, they're not making money on me right now. I'm not taking their money. And I've had other people offer to support the ministry and whatever else and, and yoke up to this church building and we'll finance you and you're not financed, but we'll support you. And No, I'm not yoking up to the church buildings. I don't think so. Verse 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which, are, or they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they should pre they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Um, yeah. We are in full-time ministry. The Lord got me to this point. I've explained why I got to this point. I can still do the secular. You see? I'm not like a young man, a novice, that goes in and, and all he can do is just preach. You see? I can still go back to this. I can still go back to doing firewood or logging or whatever else. I can still do that. But right now the doors are open for myself and also my wife that we can get a lot of uh, excuse me ministry things out there, full-time ministry, and that's why you, you support this ministry. We're doing more things than other ministries are doing with less money, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. Next go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Just two more places to turn to here. Uh, not going to go over all the different scriptures and all the different arguments. You can watch my uh, video. Does King James Video Ministries require a 10% tithe? Um, if you want to see that. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he, shall, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. The charismaniac prosperity people, just they just you know use that verse and just uh, they just cram it down people's throats and you know if you give to the Lord he'll bless you for it 
okay? But it doesn't mean he's going to bless you with more money or something like this of, of you'll be living in a multi-million dollar house and private jets and fancy Rolls Royce cars going around. That's nonsense. That's, those people have sold their souls to the devil. These uh, Creflo Dollar and, and the Kenneth Copeland and guys like that. Verse 7. Okay, if you want a, a scripture to use against this thing of a forced 10% tithe, here it is. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Okay, and if you actually want to jump over to chapter 8, verse 14 and 15, I'll read these verses here quick too. It says, uh, but, by, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. Okay, now that's talking more about dealing with within the body of Christ, you know, taking care of brethren that are having financial problems and whatever. So we've gotten really far away from that, but, uh, you know, the the point here is, if you are literally just to the point of you can't even put food on the table, you don't have the money there, you don't have an abundance to say, okay, I can support that ministry. All right, um, I really have to make sure that the food is there and stuff like that. Okay, then take care of that. If you're having financial difficulty, I'm not trying to squeeze money out of you or something like that. No. Uh, but if the Lord's blessed you and you want to support this ministry so that it goes and you can, you know, bear fruit and it'll go to your account at the judgment seat of Christ, you'll be rewarded, then give to the ministry. It's quite simple. Now, finally, I want to go to the book of Acts chapter 28. Kind of an interesting verse here. The Lord just kind of put this thing in my head the other day and I thought about it. I thought, yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing, what we do here. Because a lot of people try to say this is unscriptural. You should be meeting in a church building someplace. Acts chapter 28, verses 30 and 31 says, And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Very interesting because that's exactly what we have done, my wife and I, in this house right here. Uh, for two years now. Uh, we moved here in January of 2014. If you've been following the saga, <laughs> you know that. Um, we were doing videos when we were down in Pennsylvania, but then uh, coming here, this is the place where we were able to finally buy a place of our own. Um, it's not a fancy place. I'll talk about that more here in a minute. But, and I'm going to talk about you know some of the things that happened there, just to explain some stuff, what's going on in the and what we're planning. Um, but we have dwelt here, and it's essentially when we, you know, when we first moved here in January, it was like we had a lot to do, and we weren't really producing videos till February, March area. And um, so it's basically been two whole years that we have been in our own house, and uh, we've used this place for the ministry. Uh, this is certainly not where we want to live for the rest of our lives. It's just a very, very uh, poor shape old house that we used for the ministry. And we've been here, and like it says there in verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. You know, I tried the thing of going under different ministries and having a pastor above me and all this stuff. It does not work. It just does not work. Uh, the Lord wanted me in this ministry so that there was nobody coming and saying, now just, I just want you to take it easy on the Catholics. And we got some people here today that are in such and such. Don't offend them and stuff. Uh, I went through that. I don't want that. Can't have it. This ministry has been about preaching the word, uh, even when it hurts. <laughs> you know, uh, we don't hold back here, and um, you're not going to get that too many other places. You're not going to get the truth coming to you just unvarnished, just boom, right there it is. Not going to happen. Um, there's nobody that's going to come in here and tell us not to preach certain things. Uh, it's ironic the devil brought this this wicked cult building across the yard from us over here. It's actually a Pentecostal cult building right over there. And they brought this rock concert here. And it was like we went out and we, we preached against them. I went over and talked to the people and stuff. The police came and talked to the police. Uh, these people lied to the police officers. I mean, it was ridiculous. But uh, nobody's going to tell us what to preach here except for the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I'll take suggestions from the body of Christ. I certainly do. I've done plenty of question and answer sessions. I love those question and answer sessions. I'm probably going to be doing one in the not too far distant future. Can't do a whole lot of those because it takes a lot of time. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, nobody has come in here and told us, hey, I'm your pastor. I'm going to tell you what you can and cannot preach. No. Uh, we do what the Lord tells us to do. And um, the Lord's been really good and He's protected us. So, having said that, now let me just explain the past, present, and future of King James Video Ministries because that's where the number seven job is right now. That's where we are at. Um, my wife and I, when we moved here, uh, we needed a place of our own. Um, I was living there at my parents' property. Uh, we were living there actually in my old wood shop. It was not working out at all. It was a very, very bad situation and it was just like I was very, very stressed out, like, where are we going to live? Pennsylvania is so expensive, and, I mean, you just can't afford anything. I mean, there was there was land on the road there where my parents have their place, and it was like 50000 some dollars an acre. I mean, no way, no way. So we were looking for property. We were mentioning it. If you look at the videos from 2013, we were talking a lot about that. And uh, And I had a brother, actually, here on YouTube, and he said, um, why don't you check out Maine, Northern Maine? And I'm like, Northern Maine? What? <laughs> I've never even been there. I've been to the southern part of Maine. Back when I was a, a young boy, we'd gone up to Vermont to meet with some people up there and stuff. And, and uh, then we actually, you know, drove up into Maine and then down the coast coming back. And uh, so I'd been in Maine, just kind of crossed into it and then down, but I was never in Northern Maine. So I had no idea what this place was like up here. And uh, you know, so we decided, you know, okay, well, we'll take a trip. And so we, we came up to northern Maine, uh, just kind of as a, let's just take a road trip to see what it's like. And uh, came up here and just was like, wow, this is really a nice area up here, just beautiful area. And uh, looked about some land in um, here in Erisduke County, and uh, or Ruzduk, however you want to say it. And... Um, and the Lord provided us with the money. We bought the land. And the original uh, plan was that we were going to live off-grid. Um, in other words, no electricity. And you say, well, how are you going to do the ministry? I mean, people made fun of me for that. Ah, that guy's so stupid. He goes and he buys this wilderness land. And, you know, he's going to live there. And he's going to keep the ministry going. He's running off into the wilderness with your money. I mean, come on, people. No, it's called we're buying cheap land. I mean, we could have gone and we could have gotten some big debt and open up some huge big place, you know, 3,500 square foot home and a big ministry headquarters. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to prove things that are excellent, as the Bible talks about. And so uh, we, the original plan was we're going to buy this land. We're going to live there as cheaply as we can. I mean, if we have to live in a wall tent or something, we will. Uh, although it gets extremely cold here, just uh, actually two nights ago now, it was minus 35, so Fahrenheit. 35 below zero. So I don't think a wall tent would have been too comfortable. But um, we were going to have, you know, build out on our land and then have an office in town. So we went back down to Pennsylvania and we're planning the move and everything else. And it's like there's no buildings on the land. So where are we going to move our stuff? How are we going to put things? Where are we going to put things? And I was, we were looking at different ideas and, and all this stuff. And um, we had money left over from the purchase of the land that we had been saving up. Uh, we ended up selling some of our private or personal possessions. I had a motorcycle that I'd had for years. It was our secondary vehicle. I had my truck at the point at that, that point in time. I had a uh, 94 Ford Ranger. It was in the one video with the bumper magnets and stuff. And that would have been my truck for years and years and years. And uh, I had that and I had a Kawasaki KLR 650. And um, the Lord provided, you know, the money years before that, um, that I was able to buy it uh, as a leftover. It was brand new, leftover down in West Virginia. And that motorcycle had been really good. My wife and I had gone on a lot of little day trips and, you know, driven a thing, you know, five-hour trips and stuff on that bike. Um, really, really, it was my dream motorcycle. I loved that bike. And um, I sold it so that we could have money to buy this place. And that was just very heartbreaking, very difficult to do that. And we sold a bunch of other things, and and um, 
just scrape together every cent that we could. I mean, we were just living as cheap as we could. And, uh, and so what happened is we, we were like, okay, how on earth are we going to get up there? And we were li looking at having to live in Pennsylvania over the winter, and we did not want to do that. We wanted to get up here, but it's like, what are we going to live in back on this land? And it's just not working. So we thought, well, we'll see if we can fi find like a really, really, really bad condition home. And so what we did is we looked and this place here uh, was on the same realtor that we bought our land through. He had this place for sale and um, and it was $19,000 is what they were asking for this place. It was a bank foreclosure. They were about ready to go into foreclosure. They weren't quite there yet. Uh, the story was that this house, these people lived here for a long time and the husband died she got remarried and it was not a good remarriage and um, the guy in an effort to try and patch up the marriage decided he's going to remodel the house so he ripped up a whole bunch of stuff in this place and he was trying to fix things up and these people were on like some kind of i mean we were finding prescription medic medicine pills all over the place here when we first came here um the, the guy was half out of his mind and some of the neighbors in the area have told me that they were like those people were weird <laughs> they had a barn behind this house and one day they just decided to go out and burn the barn down and i said well was the barn in really bad shape he said no it was in good shape my neighbor told me and i'm like why did they burn it he's like nobody knows <laughs> they just decided to burn the barn down so you know weird stuff i'll tell you more about that in just a minute or two here so uh, we came, we looked at the place. It was in uh, October, I think, when we first looked at it. And, um, no, you know what, I think it was, might have been November. Yeah, I think it might have been November when we first looked at this place. And so I looked at it and it was like, this place is going to need a lot of work. It's in really bad shape. And I mean, they just moved out. They just left junk all over the place, trash everywhere. And uh, so I offered $12,000 for this place. Well, they settled for $16,000. So don't know of too many church buildings that are $16,000 buildings or ministry headquarters that are $16,000. Okay, that's all the more we spent. So if you can find a better ministry that's getting more work done with a ministry headquarters that's less than $16,000, I'd like to know about it. But... Um, I haven't told that before, but I'm telling that just simply because I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of people saying that I'm all about money and stuff like that when they're living in houses that are worth more than this. Okay. Um, we're willing to sacrifice a lot of things in order to be in the ministry. Uh, we are not going to be a burden on the body of Christ and have a $500,000 building that people need to pay the mortgage on. Uh, we don't have a mortgage. Uh, we were able to buy this thing with the money that, that we had. I mean, we were selling a lot of our personal belongings to get this money to buy this place. So don't, again, don't go, oh, $16,000, that must be nice. We sold a lot of stuff. Just scraped enough money together to get this place. So uh, keep that in mind. So we bought the place. Um, they did the counter offer. I said, okay, yeah, we'll go with that. And we... Um, came here we packed up what little money we had uh, left over and we got put it in the u-haul uh we drove here with my truck on a trailer behind the u-haul in the middle of january driving north northern maine you know i mean we're talking snowy icy roads quite a challenge and we got here expecting you know well okay we have some money left maybe we can get a little bit of fuel oil and put it in the tank and, and get enough heat in the place here it was radiant heat and stuff you know the copper pipes and all this only to come here to figure out that no they they did not turn off the water so all of our copper pipes burst so at the furnace uh cracked inside so there was no heat uh, all the pipes were busted uh, all the water and everything in the house there was no running water when we came here in the middle of january northern maine you know so we come in here and it's just like Oh boy, you know, what are we going to do? Well, um, we went through a bunch of things. I'm not going to go through all the details, but uh, I mean, they, there were lights hanging, you know, from the ceiling. They're not even attached. You know, the, most of the rooms, the light bulbs were removed. Um, there was a, over in the one room over here, the 
hallway that goes up to the steps, there were literally bare wires hanging down. That's like, yeah, that's safe, you know. Just, I mean, these, these people did such weird things. We still scratch our heads and just go, what on earth, you know? <laughs> weird stuff. The basement was just filled full of junk. I mean, one of the first things we had to do when we moved here, we got a big dumpster. We had to buy a dumpster, you know, rent a dumpster to fill it with the junk that these people had left here. I mean, it was it was incredible, you know, the the terrible stuff. The all the flooring is gone. It's just all subfloor. Um, you know, the only quote unquote flooring in the place is out in the uh, kitchen area. They have this cheap Chinese uh, little click, little board clicky things. That, you know, they click it together to make it look like it's hardwood flooring. It's not. It's just you know like a particle board with a veneered wood look on top. And uh, you just move your chair in and out like this from the table, and it, it, you know, it starts to rip at the flooring. I mean, it's it's crazy. This room here also has the same kind of flooring, and when the water pipes busted in the bathroom, uh, the water ran out across these floors. So now these floors, they they absorb the water when it was warm enough, because usually it's freezing. But this huge iceberg in the in the middle of the bathroom floor we moved in, the the door on the side of the place wouldn't even open because the, the floors were swelled so much. So we're like, you know, shoving the door, trying enough to get in, wedging through there. And I had to take the door off and cut part of the bottom of the door off just so the door opens and shuts. Um, but these, the floors are half ruined and stuff. And <laughs> it has been in something else, this place. Uh, we waited, we lived basically for four months without any heat. Uh, it doesn't really get warm here till April, May. And so we lived here without any heat. And uh, if that's why you watch some of the early videos in 2014 where we are here. Uh, I got like multiple layers of clothes on. I got a winter hat on. I got, I mean, I'm dressed like crazy because it was cold in here. Uh, there were times that I remember coming down in the morning. We'd come down to make breakfast. It was 18 degrees in the kitchen. Uh, no running water. Uh, what we did is it has a shallow well in the basement, which uh, you can lift the plywood up that covers the stone hole that goes down in and there's water down in there and so I was going down and we'd have water jugs and I'd dip water out you know did that for you know five months and uh you know why well because we're in the ministry we take this thing seriously uh, we're not going to go out and and get majorly in debt and put a burden on the body of Christ we desire to get truth out there um so and there's been plenty of times that I've been should have been fixing this place up to get it uh, habitable, and I've spent my time instead doing research for videos. And my wife the same thing. Uh, we've worked really hard uh, getting the videos out. I mean, we've put out more videos since we've been here than at any other time in the past. Uh, we've been here in our own uh, hired house, you know, for two years. Interesting, but um, so. Uh, there's still work to be done at this place, um, still a lot of uh, things that we need to get done. Um, we had to tear out all the water, all the pipes, which actually wasn't too bad because it was copper piping, so I went to a scrap yard and got decent money for all the copper pipes. But, uh, you know, we put had to put in new plumbing. Uh, fortunately, it's it's all just in that end of the this little house. It's a small little place, too, by the way. It's like less than 1,200 square feet. Not a very big place. Um, but... You know, we're, we're working on the system here, trying to get things worked out. This is eventually just going to be the ministry headquarters, Lord willing. Not sure how everything's going to work out yet. I don't know. And as far as the land is concerned, um, we use it for firewood. Uh, we use it just for recreation right now. Uh, we might end up selling the property. We're praying about that right now. Uh, not really sure what we're going to do yet. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's up to the Lord at this point. But... Uh, um, Where's the ministry going from here? I mean, I could keep talking about this place and the things that it needs and the things that the, are wrong with it, but uh, you get the point. Uh, it's, it's, we're not living in the lap of luxury. Okay, we are willing to sacrifice uh, to put ministry videos out and things for free. And again, like I said, you say, well, uh, if I send you money, you say, okay, Brother Brian, I want to send you money. I want to support this ministry. What are you going to spend my money on? Well, we have a mortgage payment coming up here because we have a, you know, five hundred thousand dollar and five hundred thousand dollars for a church building. By the way, I know in, in Pennsylvania, that buys you a very small church building. Okay, 
Um, church buildings are expensive. There's pagan temples. But, you know, uh, you're not going to get, you know, this thing of, of we have school buses to go out and, and pick up people and we have this all these expenses. I mean, you can run into the millions of dollars with just the average church. You're not going to get that here. We have a very low operating cost. We do not go out to eat. Um, we buy most of our clothing used. Uh, the two vehicles that we have um, are both older. I have a 79 Ford truck and a 1999 Volvo station wagon. Both of them uh, were, I mean, the two of them together aren't even $10,000 for the two vehicles. I mean, we do not spend money just frivolously. You know, when you send your money to King James Video Ministries, when you send a donation to King James Video Ministries, it's going to go into books. It's going to go into video material. I mean, literally, if anything goes wrong with a camera or with a computer, there's no huge savings account, you know, that we get tons of money coming in that we can just buy professional stuff. Um, everything that we have is a couple years old. And, you know, the Lord keeps it going. And uh, so I, I just, I need to say this simply because I think a lot of people don't understand what goes on here. They don't see a lot of this stuff. And um, so what's the future? Uh, well, the future is going to be that we are going to continue in this ministry. I realize that uh, you can kind of see the handwriting on the wall as far as the Internet ministry is concerned. Um, there's more and more anti-Christian sentiment coming out. Uh, back when I first got on YouTube back in 2008, uh, there, you know, there'd be the... I've always been kicked around and rebuked and stuff, but it's, it's not like it, it is now. I mean, it's... it's I mean, if I wanted to cry hate speech, I could I could cry hate speech on so many people, but I don't believe in that stuff. It's whatever. It's stupid. But uh, it just, things are getting really, really crazy and really bad. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of it's coming from professing Christians. And uh, to be quite frank, this ministry is going to continue until God's people shut it down. Um, we're not going to quit. We're going to keep coming out. I mean, the Lord gives us new information all the time. Stuff is just incredible. The Lord shows us, and, and we want to share it with the body of Christ. But the body of Christ is going to get to the point, as the apostasy gets worse and worse, the falling away gets worse, the body of Christ is going to get to the point where they don't want the truth anymore. And I believe the Lord's going to say, okay, uh, you fought a good fight. You finished the course. You've kept the faith. And I don't mean just rapture. It could be that the Lord pulls us offline. And I go back to the secular world. Making wood turnings, logging, firewood, whatever. Um, we're going to continue as long as we can. Um, we're not going to fear man. We're not going to back off because things are getting too controversial or whatever else. Uh, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. But if the time comes where we get kicked offline or it's, you have to biometrically scan to get online or something like that, we're not going to do that. Um, I don't, you know, the Christians aren't going to be here for the mark of the beast, but I am not about to f fall in line with any kind of biometric type of stuff to just to stay online. If that day ever comes, that's going to be it. Um, that's our plan. Um, I, I, when, when I get frustrated and I start saying about I don't know how much longer I'm going to be in the ministry, don't think it's me saying I'm going to quit. Uh, we are dedicated to this ministry. I mean, I could, I could quit and go back to the wood-turning world and go back to logging, and I'd make a whole lot more money and have a lot, whole lot more financial security and whatever else, and I could you know, spend time building a dream home in the wilderness someplace and whatever else. I could do that. But it's more needful for me to be here preaching to the people online. And uh, to those of you who donate to the ministry, thank you. Uh, this is the fruit. The fruit that comes from this ministry is going to abound to your account. Um, to those of you who, who mock me and, and say I don't provide for my wife, uh, we, are, we are dedicated into this ministry. I'm providing just fine for her and for my son. And... Um, if you can't see that, well, sorry about that. Feel bad for you. Uh, you know, go back to supporting your church buildings and and your big 501c3 corporations and things like that, and pastors that go on vacations and you know and whatever else. Uh, we don't go on vacations either. That's another thing. We don't waste money. 
I mean, we, we are very, very, very careful with the money that we get knowing that it's from the Lord's people. And there have been so many times that it's just been, it has been, the Lord has used some of you to give us the money right at the right time. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's, I mean, we have lived a, literally a life of miracles. Um, it's, it's amazing to see how the Lord, what the Lord does. Um, you know, I get frustrated sometimes because uh, the giving goes down and, and we have some financial difficulties now and then. Uh, thankfully, we're not in debt. So if there's times when the giving goes down, it's not like, oh man, we're not going to pay our mortgage or something. But, um, you know, there are those times and, and I get frustrated mainly because it slows the work down. And that bugs me. It, it really kind of irritates me when that happens. I, I really want... I want to keep in the. I want to stay in the fight. I want to keep videos coming out. I want to. I want to just stay active for the Lord as long as we can before you know, the Vatican. Uh, I mean, they're the ones that are behind it. The the Jesuit order. You look at. I mean, and it sounds conspiratorial. I know some people are probably going, "Oh, he's going off on that again." Look into it, man. I mean, these people are Je Jesuit educated. You know, the the head of the Office of Religious Freedom right now is a Jesuit, a Jesuit priest. I mean, it's right there. They're Knights Templar. They're Knights of Malta, they're Jesuits, they're Roman Catholics, they're tied to the Catholic Church. They're... That's why I say it all the time. It's the Vatican that's doing this stuff. Uh, there's going to come a point in time when they're going to shut down Bible-believing ministries. And, you know, and it's because the Lord's going to allow them to do it. Because the Lord's going to say, okay, you've gotten the warnings. You've gotten you people out there that watch this stuff and you don't get saved and, and you don't care and you Christians that are ripping on you know, preachers and things that are getting work done, okay, uh, I'm going to pull this ministry. At that point, well, we'll go back to doing secular work again. I'll go back to doing secular work. My wife will, uh, she'll be a, a mother and a, and a housewife. And she is those things right now, but she's also a researcher. Um, and, you know, and, 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 that, and also in that vein, I just want to say this too, and that is, uh, she's not a preacher, and I and I've talked about that in another video, um, but she is she is a tremendous researcher. I mean, she gets into stuff sometimes. It just makes my head spin. Right now, Lord's got her on a study. It's going to be phenomenal when it comes out. I mean, this is stuff I've had questions about my whole life. I think it's one of the most important uh, things for not only the body of Christ but for the whole world. I mean, it it is phenomenal. What the Lord has showed this woman, this my wife. I mean, she just, and sometimes she'll just, she'll be like, I'll be like, so what's the Lord been showing you? And she'll sit down, she'll start going off on this stuff and technical thing. I'm just going like, <laughs> you know, okay, start over, say it slower, and explain it in simpler English. <laughs> you know, just, uh, she, she really has some, some insight from the Lord, uh, and you know, and and she's a kind of a woman that's, it's, she's not like. I want my own, you know, expensive sport utility vehicle and I want to go on vacations. And she's perfectly content to be just a very simple woman. We eat two meals a day. I mean, she's content. She loves this life, you know. Uh, I mean, we both wish that we could, we could be away from the Internet and stuff like that. But we also are dedicated to serving the Lord. And we know that this time is limited. The time of us getting these videos out, brethren, it's not that much longer. You know, the falling away is going to get to that point where the Lord's just going to say, okay, you people have been warned, and whether the rapture or, you know, uh, biometric technology, whatever stuff, and we're, we're done. And then, you know, and at that point, you know, and, it, and it, I'll just be very frank here, if if you are the type of a Christian that says, I'm not going to give a cent to this ministry. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to be, I'm going to be fed from the ministry, and I'm just not going to give them a thing. And we go under, you know. Uh, okay, that's on you, you know. But uh, you have you have a ministry here that is dedicated to getting the word out for free. Um, we don't copyright stuff. It's the two of us working. Okay, um, and. You're not going to find another ministry like that. I don't really, I, don't, I mean, I've thought about that and stuff, and I've, I've thought, is anybody else doing what we do? Uh, no, they're not. Um, you give money to this ministry 
to the work of the Lord here, and it's going to come back at the judgment seat of Christ. The Lord will reward you for it. So, I think that's it. This is, you know, kind of went a little bit long, but uh, this is part of my testimony. I've got a lot of stuff to say about my testimony. I've had a very interesting life. Um, that's going to be it. Uh, again, I'm, please, if you're if you're donating to the ministry, I am not putting any more pressure on you to give more or anything else. Please don't feel guilty. Uh, you know, the Lord provides. I mean, He, he takes care of us and things. Um, but if you're if you're saying, you know, I'd really like to give to this ministry, I really feel led. If you feel the Holy Spirit telling you to help us out, to keep us online, to keep this ministry going, then please do. Uh, we will appreciate. We will not abuse the funds. We are living as cheaply as we can, uh, so as not to be a burden on the body of Christ. But we take our ministry seriously. Um, this is not something that we we have a nine to five and we leave it and whatever else. This is our life. Um, we live just with the ministry all the time. So I'm going to quit talking now because I'm getting tired and my, my voice is starting to get kind of... <laughs> I think I'm losing my voice here. I've been talking now for a couple hours, so did a couple other videos today too. So need to uh, end this video. Thank you to everybody out there that does support the ministry. Um, and again, we need your prayers uh, just as much if not more than the donations um, but thank you very much for everybody out there and uh, please uh, keep us in your prayers and we will see you in the next video